Greetings fellow men, Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again and now I just quickly want to respond to basically two main points that came up during my last videos and uh, I maybe seemed a little dismissive in the comment section because I didn't want to type out the same answers over and over again so as this, these points were raised a couple of times I want to uh, respond to that in a little response video here. So the first point was that I basically cannot claim that there are false allegations of rape at the same time and say uh, migrants are harassing girls in Germany at the moment. You know, either all women lie all the time. I know this sounds like a straw man, but this is what it comes down to. Yeah, so I should decide basically whether or not women are lying or whether men are raping. But my response to that is that both things are happening at the same time. I mean, there can be more than one process going on at the same time, of course. And I never said that um, false rape allegations are um, the majority of cases. I I don't have any numbers on that. I mean, I looked up some numbers and they, oh God, they vary all over the place. Some say it's as high as 60% and some say it's just 2%. I mean, <laughs> I really don't know what to believe. But I want to believe that um, false rape allegations are still a very rare phenomenon. I mean, personally, I, I, I don't know of anybody personally, just from the media, who got falsely accused of rape. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't know anybody who has been accused of rape personally or either. So I think they're both rare events. But I'd like to believe that these false rape allegations are more rare than an actual case of rape. And this notion that I have to decide uh, scenario A or B, but I cannot uh, have it both ways, it implies that all societies, that all cultures are basically equal. But uh, I don't think so, actually. I mean, my ancestors, for example, you know, from the migration period, you know, in um, late antiquity, you know, when, when um, the hordes from Eurasia drove my ancestors <laughs> into the Roman Empire, destabilizing it in the process, um, they were a savage bunch. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. My ancestors were savage, uh, superstitious, archaic people. I mean, they had their good sides also, and they weren't evil per se, but uh, if you would ask me today if I want to live in an ancient German tribe, I would say, mm, thanks, but no thanks, you know. They had still human sacrifice, and, and, and you could be uh, executed because of blasphemy, for example. I mean, they were still very archaic, and um, I would not have wanted to live in an ancient German tribe. But um, these people who come into Europe now, and they are um, maybe not evil, but they are on a lower uh, level of civilization, I would say. Just like my ancestors were not like the Germans of uh, the 21st century. And my ancestors had slaves, and they were slaves themselves in the Roman Empire, for example. Um, but um, in many Muslim countries, slavery is still a thing, right? They still practice slavery. And slavery always implies rape. When you have a female slave, I mean, yeah, you kind of have the right to rape her. And I think a female slave cannot give consent. So if you come from a culture with Sharia law where rape is actually legal, um, and there was just a case where some Saudi ambassador in Berlin had a slave in his apartment and the slave managed to escape. But um, yeah, in those countries there is still slavery. And if people with that cultural background come here, what do you think then their attitudes will be towards rape? Huh? And there was a guy also who said he practiced his right to kill his wife. I mean, he really thought as a husband it's his right to kill his wife. I mean, you, you don't find these attitudes in Germans in the 21st century. It just doesn't exist. You know, we have developed, uh, we had enlightenment, we had them, we are democratic now, so you don't find these attitudes anymore. But in Africa and the Middle East, these attitudes are very widespread still. This is why they have child soldiers, they have sex slaves, they have slave markets where they auction prisoners of war as slaves. It's a different culture. It is not the same, but it is reminiscent of my ancestors from 1500 years ago, maybe. Also, the ancient Vikings, by the way, had slaves, and the Irish were also slavers. For example, if you take St. Patrick, uh, the, the national saint of Ireland, he was a Briton, and he had been taken as a slave by Irish slavers. So he was then 
in Ireland as a slave. Um, I think he was a shepherd slave or something. And he then um, showed Christianity to the Irish heathens. And this is the story of St. Patrick. So, yeah, we had slavery back then. But you have to go back quite a while in history, you know. And Christians ended slavery in ancient Rome. When Christianity became the state religion in Rome, they ended slavery. So you see that the attitudes in the West, they change. But in Africa and the Middle East, they never change. They still practice slavery until this day. Which leads me already to my second point, and that is the accusation of being ableist or of calling other people stupid or something. And I also think that there are uh, ability differences in certain uh, things when it comes to people from different geographical backgrounds, you know, I mean, people from East Africa are very good at long distance running, people from West Africa are very good at sprinting, and maybe uh, Germans, Japanese and Jews are very good at winning Nobel Prizes, huh? I mean, our intelligence is also basically a function of our body and our brain. Yeah? It's also an organ, and uh, maybe ours is a little more capable. And I, I'm, I'm, I don't even uh, want to get into the discussion if this is uh, genetic or if it's cultural or something. I mean, the biological component is not the only one, of course, but it definitely exists. I think we can be sure of that. Um, and, and for that discussion, it actually doesn't matter if it's uh, biological or social or environmental or whatever. Um, it's just the fact that there are different levels of competence different preferences that um, these groups show and what um, careers they pursue, what fields they uh, gravitate towards and um, yeah, I think that's very evident and if you set lower standards for one group and higher standards for another group then you actually, even if those intelligence levels were the, the very same, even then if you move the goalposts, like I described in my SJW uh, calculus video, if you make it easier for, uh, for example, black students to get into college and you make it harder for Asian students to get in, even if they were exactly of the same average intelligence, those two groups, even then you would get the situation that in the classroom a relatively smart Asian group has to uh, do the same tests and the same assignments as a relatively less intelligent black group because they have been selected like this, because there were lower entrance standards for the black group. And so even in case of the same intelligence level, this argument and this situation still pertains actually. So I really don't know what the fuss is. Yeah? And um, I was living in, for three years in Japan, for example, and the Japanese have a distinctly higher IQ than Germans on average. Um, so they know it, I know it, and no one thought it was a big deal. So what? So the average Japanese is smarter than the average German. Ooh, big deal doesn't matter to me. Who cares? I know that I'm on the right side of the bell curve. Yeah? I mean, I proved that uh, during my academic career. And um, you can take an IQ test. There is nothing cultural in an IQ test. I mean, they're very abstract uh, matrix puzzles or some language stuff like what is the opposite of what or, and, and stuff like that. And some calculation, of course, but also pattern recognition. So um, why would someone, some white patriarchy, I mean, why would they design or temper with an IQ test just so that people from Singapore and China and Japan would come out on top? I mean, <laughs> I really don't believe that. And I really noticed when I was in Japan that they are smarter than the average German and not because I worked at a un university. I also worked at a university in Germany. So, of course, I have a selective uh, perception because I am at places of learning of course and um, I don't have really um, friends from the working class there really some of them yes but mostly I was hanging out at the university of course but still I mean I could see that they're much more dedicated they're much more focused on a acquiring knowledge and, and honing their skills that is very important there and I could see that they're much more serious about that than we are that might be cultural okay but um, I think they are smarter and I don't care. I really don't care. As long as we uh, have standards, as long as we have academic standards and tests so that the right people end up at the right place. I don't want any affirmative action. I don't want to artificially give someone a handicap or artificially raise someone's score so that they will be in the wrong place in the end. Yeah? And, and then who cares what color of skin they are or, or 
what real religion they have. I, I couldn't care less about that as long as they have to prove themselves and as long as they are um, subject to the same metric than everybody else. So I hope that this clarifies some points and um, you cannot call me racist, I think, because I mean, I have co-workers from all over the planet and I work together with them just in the same way as with uh, people from my country or my cultural background. You can call me ableist maybe because I do believe that there is no sense in um, treating a person who is super bright and super hardworking and super productive to treat them the same as someone who plays video games and smokes pot all day long or is a criminal even. I mean, why why would you treat these people the same? It doesn't make any sense. So you can call me ableist, but I think ableist is the or ableism is the most retarded and most ridiculous form of all the isms. Um, if you feel better, then you can call me ableist. Yeah, that I can really claim this label. I think. Yeah, yeah, with confidence. Okay, so I'm off to a little trip now, and I hope you also enjoy your weekend. Uh, thanks for stopping by, have a great day, and Servus Kameraden!